I'm going to show you how you can create sliding text that is smooth and that loops perfectly without any plugins. And of course, we're also going to make it responsive as well. I'm also going to show you how you can adjust it, reverse it and rotate it, which will help you achieve some awesome effects. We'll just be using a little bit of code, but if you give me a couple of minutes of your time, I bet I can teach you how to do this. You can use this anywhere because it's HTML, JavaScript and CSS. But don't worry, I'll walk you through all of the steps. So just make sure you stick around until the end of the video. I'll be showing you how you can do it in WordPress and I'll be using Elementor, but you can do this with any other page builder as well. And yes, this will work with the new containers inside of Elementor. So all you have to do is add in an HTML element to your page. In Elementor, you can do so by adding in an HTML widget. Then once you do that, you're going to copy and paste in this HTML and JavaScript. All of this will be available down below so you can just copy and paste it in. The next step is to add in our CSS. I'm going to add it inside the HTML widget under advanced and then custom CSS. But if you're not using Elementor Pro, you can go ahead and go into your admin bar, press customize, additional CSS and paste it in here. Once I paste it in, you're going to notice our slider starts working. But in your case, it's probably not quite right yet. We have to do two things. The first is we need to change the text. So I'm going to go over here into my HTML and over here in this div class loop, I have my content. Just type in whatever you want. I'm going to type in and like the video as well. And I'm going to leave the symbol. And the second thing we need to do is adjust the CSS so we can customize how it looks and how fast it is. In the CSS, the first thing you're going to have to change is the font family. Just type in whichever font family you want. I'm going to change it to IBM Plex Mono. Once you change your font family, go ahead and change the font size to whatever you want. You can also change the font weight and the color. I'm going to keep those as is. And the next thing you're going to notice is this padding left. This is essentially the gap that occurs between our text as it gets repeated. You're going to see what I mean once I make it very large. This is the gap that I'm talking about over here. You're going to have to adjust this based on the font family and size and weight you're using. Now you can use whichever unit you want. I'm using EM because in this case, it's easier to work with than pixels. So just change this value until you get it right. And it looks the way it's supposed to. And then you can change the speed of the animation over here. You can make it really fast or really slow, whatever you want. I'm going to leave it at 15 seconds. If this is helpful, please make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel. It would help me out a whole lot. Now we need to make it responsive. We can do so by adjusting these values over here. This will change the font size and this will change the padding for devices under 767 pixels. So for mobile phones, and you can also change the speed of the animation for mobile phones by adjusting this value over here, you're probably going to need to do this because otherwise it will be way too fast on mobile. For all of the testing you do, I recommend you check out the website on an actual mobile phone. Viewing the website by inspecting it can make the sliding text look faster or slower than it does on an actual phone. I find that adjusting it for mobile and keeping it as is for tablet works well in most cases. Cases. But if you want it to be responsive for even more screen sizes, just add in more of these media queries. Here's an example for tablets. So for devices between 767 and 1024 pixels for more screen sizes, just copy and paste this and change the values. And you can even change colors. You can change the weight of the font. You can change pretty much whatever you want for whichever screen size you want. If you want more than one sliding text on your website or even more than one on your page, you can just duplicate it, but that will lead to sliding text with different speeds, even if the content is the same. If I update this and go to my life page, you're going to see that even though the content is identical, the speeds are different. Do keep in mind that when your content is different, the speed might feel different as well, even though it's actually the same. But that is not what's happening here because the content is the same. To fix this and to style these sliding texts differently and to set different speeds, there's just one more thing we have to do. Every part of this, so the HTML, the JavaScript and the CSS uses classes. And because the classes, when we just duplicate this, stay the same, things get a little out of hand and one sliding text is slower than the other. So we need to change them to get this to work. But if we change the classes, we can also change the CSS targeting those classes while keeping our other sliding texts with different classes the same. The classes you need to change are outer, loop 
and content. Keep in mind that they have to match in every part of the code. First in the HTML. So I'm gonna rename them. I'm gonna rename outer and I'm gonna name it outer2. I'm gonna go over to loop and I'm gonna name it loop2. I'm gonna go over to content and I'm gonna name it content2. Then I'm gonna match it in this JavaScript. So I'm gonna go into outer and type in two, outer2. Two. Then I'm gonna do content2 and then I'm gonna do loop2. And the last thing I have to do is go into the CSS and do the same thing. I'm gonna go under content, add in a two, do the same thing for the mobile version, and the same thing for outer, and loop everywhere. And that's all I had to do. So once I do that, if I update this and I go to the live page, you're gonna see the sliders are identical. The speed is as it should be. But this also gave me the ability to style this text differently and change how fast it is. And the original is gonna stay the same. Keep in mind that these classes can be anything, they just have to match in every part of the code. So instead of content two, I could rename this daisies. And as long as I renamed it to daisies everywhere, it will work just fine. And the process for using them on different pages is the same. All you have to do is copy and paste everything to that new page. And once you do that, you're just gonna follow the same steps. First, if needed, adjust the content and then change out the classes and then style it however you want. But if I copy it to another page like I did right now, it works well even if I don't change anything. But I would still recommend you go ahead and switch out the classes. Copying the same thing on several parts of your website might lead to issues, especially if you forget where something is. Because of that, I find it's best if you just go ahead and change out the classes for every single sliding text. Plus, that'll give you more freedom and control over your sliding text. Let's take a look at how we can reverse the sliding text. There's only one small thing we have to do. In our CSS, we're going to go under our loop class and we're going to add in animation direction reverse. Now you're probably going to notice my upper sliding text. So the original is going a little bit crazy, but no worries. This is only happening on the back end. If I go ahead and update this and I view the life page, you're going to see it works as it's supposed to. We have our original and we have our original reversed. So always test things out and adjust them based on the live page. And don't panic if this happens. It's not actually happening on the live page. The other thing you have to do when reversing the direction is add it to the mobile version as well. Rotating the text is just as easy. We're just gonna go under our outer class. In my case, it's outer two and add in transform rotate and then I'm gonna make it five degrees. If I update this and I check out the life page, this is what I get. And of course, these degrees can be whatever you want. Let's make it minus three and we get this little rotated angled text. And if I want to make this full screen, because right now it isn't, I have to go into the largest container, go under content width and set it to full width. Then I have to do the same thing to the smaller container, set it to full width, and once I update this, you can see we have our sliding text, the rotated one, going from the left edge to the right edge of the screen. So just make sure that the container that your HTML element is in and any of its parent containers are set to full width. And of course, you can also style the containers as you normally would, so any way you like, to get some pretty cool effects. Just like this container over here. Plus you can combine any of these different effects. This sliding text is very versatile. To achieve a rotated banner, so text with a background, just like here, you're just gonna have to style the outer class. So if I go into my banner, so the top one, the black one, and I go under my CSS, you're gonna see my outer class, that is called outer three in my case, has a background color and some padding on the top and on the bottom. And of course, I also changed the color of the text under content. And don't forget to make these changes responsive as well if you need them to be. To change the properties for mobile, just copy this media query, paste it again, and change out the class from loop, in my case loop 3, to outer 3. And then once you copy that media query and you target the correct class, you can go ahead and make your changes. If I wanted a different background color for mobile, I could just go ahead and type in a different background color and if I check my desktop, you're gonna see it's black. If I check my tablet, it's black. And once I go on mobile, it is red because I set it to be red. And the same thing goes for the angle. So the rotation and the color of the font, whatever you want, you can change it for mobile. Have fun and go crazy with it. Under outer, you're also gonna notice I gave it a width and I gave it a negative margin on the left. Let me just delete this and you're gonna see why in a second. So if I go ahead and update this, 
you're going to notice once I zoom in without those, there is a gap over here and a gap over here. So it doesn't go from the left edge of the screen to the right edge of the screen perfectly. So that's the reason. So once I add that back in and update the page, it works the way it's supposed to. All of this will also be available down below so you can copy and paste it and mix and match and get the result you want. Keep in mind that doing this will cause overflow, even though the overflow is already set to hidden. The best way to counter this in Elementor directly is to go to the largest possible container your HTML widget is in and going under layout, additional options and setting the overflow to hidden. If you're not using Elementor, you can achieve the same thing by adding a tiny bit of CSS to whichever container your HTML is in. First, give it a class. In my case, I'll call it a container. Then you're gonna go into your CSS and add this in. Container overflow X hidden. Keep in mind that adding this to a container that is not as tall as the rotated text will result in the text getting cut off. I'm gonna show you how that looks if I go into my smaller container over here and I set the overflow to hidden. I update this and you're going to see that over here on the right side and on the left side, it gets cut off. And this is the result. You can fix it by giving it a little bit more padding. If I make the padding bigger, that issue disappears. But there is another fix. If your con main container is not tall enough and you can't give it more padding, you can fix this by going into your admin bar, customize, additional CSS, and you can add in this body overflow X hidden. This will get rid of any horizontal overflow on your website. This usually is not a bad thing because most websites do not need or want horizontal overflow. But do keep in mind that this is not the first solution you should try, especially because it can mask other flaws and issues with your layouts. First, try to fix the issue on the container level and if you're using another page builder other than Elementor on whichever element your HTML is in. Now you're gonna notice I also made these two sliding texts overlap. I did that by giving the bottom one a negative margin on the top to move it up and then I also gave the one I wanted to be on top a higher Z index. So in my case, the top one has a Z index of two and the bottom one has a Z index of one. You can do this in Elementor directly by going into your container and giving it a negative margin on the top or bottom, depends on which one you're adding the negative margin to. And then again, you can go ahead and add in a Z index and the larger Z index is gonna be on top. But I did it with CSS and you can do it with CSS as well. I just added in a negative margin, a Z index and position relative. Without position relative, the Z index isn't gonna work. And as a bonus, if you want to achieve something like this, where you have more space between your words or your symbols, you can do so by adding in a non-breaking space, which is this. So if I go ahead and delete all of my non-breaking spaces, and I just try to use normal spaces, you're gonna see it doesn't work. If you try to use normal spaces, your browser is always gonna show just one space. But with the non-breaking space, you can use as many spaces as you want to. And this allows you to add in space between your sliding text. Very simple, very easy, very fast. If you run into any issues with this sliding text in general, the first thing I recommend is that you clear out every cache. And also make sure you're looking at the actual sliding text on the live website on the front end, because as you can see in the editor, things can look different than what they actually are. In my case, it's super fast, it's crazy, it's out of hand. When on the actual page, on the actual live website, everything looks and works exactly the way it's supposed to. If this video was helpful, check out this video next. It's very interesting as well. And make sure you hit that thumbs up button. Thank you for watching.